everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Richard Holder, and because it's cold today, I'm also a long sleeve blue shirt guy. Today, we'll take a look at an awesome test about boost pressure versus back pressure. We have the Hooker cast iron turbo manifolds versus the aftermarket tubular turbo headers. Which one of them has the most or least back pressure? Which one of them has the most or least power? There's only one way to find out. Quick, let's head to the dyno. Hey guys, if you're new, welcome to the channel. But what happens if you have a question? Hey, I saw this video, but I wanted to ask Richard a question. Well, you're in luck. You get to do that. Join us nightly, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on the live feed. You can come on, join the group. If I don't have an answer to your question, chances are there are lots of bright guys. They might have an answer. So if you've got a question about any of the video that you just saw, or maybe you're working on a project, Join us live, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, on this channel. To get started on our comparison between the Holly slash Hooker turbo exhaust manifolds and tubular exhaust manifolds that are pretty common, like the stuff we get from eBay, let's take a look at our test motor. It is a 5.3 liter. We're going to go ahead and go to our test description here. 5.3 liter started out as an LM7 short block from the wrecking yard. It had stock 706 heads on it. It did have a spring upgrade. We had ARP head studs on it and MLS head gaskets. We had a Trailblazer SS intake manifold fold, a fast 90 millimeter throttle body or a 92 millimeter throttle body. We had stock rockers on it. I, as I said, we did put the spring upgrade on it, stock push rods on it, inch and seven eighths long tube headers. And uh, we put the stock um, LQ7 or uh, early truck camshaft in it to begin with. And we ran this thing NA and then added the Holly Hooker turbo system on it. We had 60 pound injectors in it because we were going to be running a ton of power. So run in this manner are 5.3 liter with no accessories, long tube headers, and uh, collector extensions. Produced 359 horsepower and 384 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed our turbo setup with the stock cam. Peak power jumped all the way up to 601 horsepower and 613 horsepower. And this is at a peak boost of a little over 10 pounds. You can see it did very well as we would expect from the turbo stuff. Let's take a look at our turbo combination. This was a Precision 7675 turbo. It had a Pro Charger air to water intercooler. And as I said, we had the Holly. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you another photo of the cast a Holly hooker turbo setup with a two and a half inch cross under pipe going from one exhaust manifold over to the over to the other and we had a seven pound turbo smart wastegate spring on it so we had a single 90 degree elbow with the wastegate and the turbo mounted in that position so now let's take a look and see what happened we went from the stock cam we ended up putting a, a cam upgrade on this and this was a BTR stage two turbo cam run at the same boost level. You can see we made, we pushed power all the way up to 721 horsepower. So big change in power, 120 horsepower from a cam swap. Pretty typical, this stage two turbo cam, not the only cam that will do this. Lots of other camshafts, Texas Speed, Cam Motion, Comp Cams. Almost everybody has a mild cam like this that will push power way up compared to the factory cam. Now that we know that the turbo setup works and it works with the camshaft, let's take a look and see what a comparison is because I ran the Holly Hooker stuff compared to these tubular exhaust manifolds and obviously a different Y-pipe. So Let's check it out. So now that we've taken a look at what happened when we upgraded our camshaft, putting a better camshaft in the Turbo LS, obviously always a good idea and yielded really big power gains at the same 10, 11 pound of boost range. Uh, good gains from a camshaft, which we have seen in the past. But let's find out what happens with the boost pressure versus back pressure by comparing the Holly slash Hooker exhaust manifolds to these tubular header style manifolds and a different Y-pipe, obviously. And that's where we ran into trouble, but we'll get into that when we start talking about the boost curve. So this was our combination with the hooker exhaust manifolds. We were running about 11 pounds. This was with the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 Turbo Cam on our 5.3 liter. We made 721 horsepower and 644 foot-pounds of torque. 
Here's what happened when we added our tubular exhaust and new white pipe, same turbo, same intercooler, same discharge tube, all that was the same, same exhaust after the turbo. The only thing we changed were the exhaust manifolds themselves and then obviously the Y pipe to connect those exhaust manifolds. So we went from the Holly Hooker version to the tubular manifolds and these were our new power curves, but obviously both horsepower and torque. Now we're gonna to need to go over the boost curves on this because part of what we're seeing here is a change in boost curve. And that's because we changed the number of wastegates and then ultimately the boost curve of each combination because we were just running these things on the spring with our turbo smart wastegates. We had seven pound springs in them. We obviously didn't have the boost control that we <laughs> that we wanted. And we had a rising boost curve on this that rose from about seven or eight pounds up to 11 pounds. But on the hooker one, we only had a single turbo smart wastegate. So we had better control with the dual wastegates, which we could, and, and with the boost control, we could have ultimate control over, but we didn't do that. So we had two things going on. One, we went from a single to a dual wastegate. And obviously with the hooker exhaust, we're changing the back pressure as well, which also changes the boost pressure that you get because the back pressure works against the wastegate to try to open the wastegate. But as we'll see when we take a look at the boost curves, the boost from 6,000 to 6,500 was almost identical between the two exhaust manifolds. So even if we disregard what happened before that and attribute that to the change in boost, which obviously it has a great deal to do that, we see the same boost from 6,000 to 6,500 RPM. And in that range, we saw a difference of about 30 horsepower uh, even more than that, let's see here at 6,500, we went from 721 to 765, so 44, 45 horsepower. So that's a pretty big change. And now let's take a look at the boost curves and we'll see what we can attribute that change in power to. Now that we've taken a look at the change in power associated with going from our hooker cast iron exhaust manifolds to our tubular exhaust manifolds and change in Y pipe, let's take a look at the boost pressure versus back pressure offered by each one of those and see if we can attribute that change in power to a change in back pressure. So these two curves represent the boost pressure in blue and the back pressure in light green, if you will, associated with that we got from running our hooker cast iron exhaust setup with our precision turbo. So run at a peak of 11 pounds of boost out here at 65 and 6600 RPM, we had a peak back pressure of 21.2 pounds. So you can see that we were about two to one in our boost pressure versus back pressure. It's also important to note, I wanna, I wanna show you down here, we'll circle this down here down in this area below 3500 rpm we see that we actually had less back pressure than we had boost pressure so it is possible to have less back pressure than boost pressure i had that on my bonneville civic because we sized the turbo to do exactly that we weren't as concerned about response rate but it is possible but as you see past 3500 the boot the back pressure really started to climb whereas our boost pressure was not climbing night near as much and that shows you that something is going on with response with respect to back pressure. Now let's compare this to what happened when we added our tubular exhaust. And that is this right here. Please don't be confused. But one thing I want you to notice, again, take a look at this area right here. This is our 6,000 to 6,500 RPM. And we were talking about the power change. This area right here, the boost pressure is exactly the same. They're both right at 11 pounds. From 6,000 to 6,500, our boost pressure is exactly the same but our back pressure is not. We can see on our tubular exhaust with our tubular headers, the back pressure was 14.6 PSI. Whereas we saw over 21 PSI of back pressure with the hooker cast iron setup. So we know right away that that cast iron exhaust run with the same turbo and the same intercooler and the same boost pressure definitely has more back pressure. The question is, and please let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Can we attribute that change in power that we saw, which was 35, 40 horsepower at the same boost pressure? Can we attribute all of that change in power to back pressure? We didn't have a change in air fuel. We didn't have a change in timing. We did have a change in back pressure and we had a change in power. So is all of that change in back pressure just, or all of that change in horsepower just from this change in back pressure? Get to our conclusion.
Okay, guys, what to take away in this comparison of boost pressure versus back pressure? We have our hooker cast iron turbo exhaust manifolds versus our tubular header turbo manifolds and one of these had more or less back pressure and one of these had more or less power but there are two things that we learned here first of all and this is very important that run on the dyno our turbo combinations seem to require more wastegate for control than they do either on the chassis dyno or on the street i've run lots of combinations out on the street and at the track with a single wastegate and it's worked perfect Try to run those on the engine dyno and I need more wastegate for proper control. So the setup where I ran two wastegates definitely had better control, but the hooker system should not be like dismissed because it only had one wastegate. I think that that was only a problem on the dyno and isn't out on the track or out on the street because I know guys that are running these and they work fine. So if we dismiss that and look at the area where we had our test, where we had exactly the same things. We had the same air fuel, we had the same timing, we had the same boost pressure, but we had two things that were different. One, the power changed, and secondly, the back pressure changed. So the question now is, with all of those other things the same, we changed the power and we had more back pressure, did more back pressure actually drop the power output? Please let me know in the comments. I think it did but let me know what you guys think. My name is Richard Holder. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing just like this coming up.